Good morning, my name is Peter Nilsson from the Lund University in Sweden. Today I'm going to address um, the fountain of youth for aging arteries, drugs and the arterial wall. Uh, this is my only way to present in this digital format today because of the pandemic situation. So to start with a painting, this is the fountain of youth from 1546, uh, painted by Lucas Cranach the Elder, um, as an illustration to a very old um, um, wish to rejuvenate uh, human beings and to stop aging to become once more a young person. At the very end of uh, the 19th century, uh, the French professor Charles Edouard Brown-Sacard got very famous because he offered um, uh, gland extracts to rejuvenate um, people, especially elderly men um, that were uh, offered uh, testicular as extracts. I don't think it was very effective. Maybe it was more like a placebo effect. Looking at the arteries, we know that they undergo aging. Uh, to the right, you see atherosclerosis starting in the arterial intima. And to your left, you see arteriosclerosis starting in the uh, arterial media with less elastin and more uh, collagen uh, through, through aging. Um, way back in 2008, I coined um, uh, the early vascular aging EVA syndrome together with my uh, colleagues in, in Paris, France. And later on in 2016, this concept was picked up by the Lancet Commission on Hypertension uh, when uh, they um, focused on strategies to um, um, counteract early vascular aging uh, to achieve a more average life course and even an ideal life course while um, this is um, uh, of such importance in, in younger age. So preventive measures should be uh, started very early in life, maybe even before birth uh, to counteract this vascular aging. Uh, to the left, you see some well-known behavioral um, interventions to uh, protect vascular system and counteract uh, vascular aging to the right, you see some pharmacological strategies, not only the well-known antihypertensive drugs, statins, metformin, aspirin, but also some uh, newer drugs like rapamycin and anti-pro-inflammatory cytokine agents. There is even hope that uh, prebiotics and probiotics could um, uh, beneficially influence gut microbiota and thereby postpone vascular aging. On this slide is a list of molecular and cellular level targets for these uh, drug interventions uh, to stop vascular aging. Uh, addressing oxidative stress, chronic low-grade inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, microvascular rarification, growth factors, mitochondrial RNA regulators, senolytics, and sirtuins. Uh, the latter ones are involved in um, the process of aging in general. Here I have listed three categories of uh, drugs um, able to influence the arterial wall. First of all, we have the established drugs, antihypertensive drugs like ROS blockers, calcium antagonists, then the glucose lowering drugs like metformin, STLT2 inhibitors, GP1 receptor analogs, the modern drugs, lipid lowering drugs, statins, acetamide, PCSK9 inhibitors, and more widely used in later years, the mineral receptor blockers antagonists, uh, spirulactin or aplerinone. Upcoming drugs are anti-inflammatory, drugs polypill and sevelomir that 
it could counteract the calcification of the arterial media, Munchebe sclerosis in chronic kidney disease patients. On the horizon, we have some experimental drugs like resveratrol, resembling uh, the beneficial components of red wine, compound 29, uh, 21, um, that is an angiotensin 282 receptor agonist, CERT1 activators to increase sirtuins, calorie restriction mimetics to slow down the rate of aging, aid breakers, um, tested 20 years ago. They worked in animals, but not so well in humans. 10 years ago, it was shown that prolonged antihypertensive treatment uh, was able to reduce pulse wave velocity. The longer the treatment, the better the blood pressure control, uh, the more pulse wave velocity was reduced. And there was hope that some antihypertensive drugs could do better than other drugs to achieve this. To the left on this slide, we see short-term effects on pulse wave velocity when ACE inhibitors are more favorable, but during long-term treatment, um, this uh, difference to other classes of antihypertensive drugs is not so visible anymore. So I think blood pressure control in general is what matters. And one way uh, to, to analyze this is also uh, to do a systematic uh, review meta-analysis of all studies, including um, ACE inhibitors and their effects on carotid femoral pulse velocity. So you see in general, uh, they are not so much better than other drugs. It's non-significant, even if some studies show better effects. So in the end, it's blood pressure control per C that matters. Uh, the way to solve this is to combine different uh, low-dose uh, drugs into one quad pill, as recently uh, published, when ibisotan, amlodipine, indepamide, bisoprolol were all um, added into one pill, a quad pill, with much better blood pressure control as compared to initial monotherapy, um, and thereby uh, the preventive effects on the vascular tree will also be much more um, pronounced. Just a few months ago, uh, we learned about the end results of the SPART study uh, as organized by Professor Stéphane Laurent in Paris. In this study, a strategy was tested to focus on control of pulse wave velocity per se, as compared to a conventional strategy addressing the risk factors uh, in general. And the results could show uh, no difference according to cardiovascular endpoints because lack of statistical power, but a much better control of pulse wave velocity in the red arm patients um, uh, with a target of uh, pulse wave velocity control as compared to the blue line conventional treatment. So a more focused approach will um, provide more benefits on pulse wave velocity and thereby um, prevent vascular aging, arterial stiffness. Let's go to the anti-glycemic drugs. First, we have the class of STLT2 inhibitors. Uh, and as seen here, dapagliflozin, one member of this class, uh, is more beneficial than placebo for reduction of pulse wave velocity. It's not fully clear why this is the case, but uh, such drugs may lower blood pressure, increase diuresis, reduce body weight and also relax the vascular wall. Oxidative stress and inflammation are downregulated and vascular aging is reduced. Let's go to lipid lowering drugs. In this study, um, meta-analysis, uh, different uh, dosages of uh, statins were compared to 
physical exercise. And as shown here, high dose uh, statins, moderate dose statins were more effective, but high intensity exercise was not so far behind. But this means that also statins at higher dosages can reduce pulse wave velocity. Let's go to anti-inflammatory drugs. Kanashinumab, colchicine, both have been tested, both have been published uh, to prevent from cardiovascular uh, complications, uh, especially in secondary prevention. Uh, these drugs um, interfere with the uh, different uh, interleukins, cytokines, and in the end, inflammatory biomarkers are reduced as a beneficial effect to um, reduce the cardiovascular risk, and thereby, I guess, also um, arterial stiffness and vascular changes can be improved and uh, risk is prevented. On the horizon, we have newer drugs like the senolytic drugs, the sirtuins, and resveratrol, as I mentioned previously. These are undergoing studies, especially in lab animals, but also tested in humans. For example, the CERT1 activators increase levels of sirtuins, and thereby uh, several beneficial changes are seen in lab animals including a reduction of inflammation and cardioprotection uh, that will um, uh, have the potential uh, to counteract cardiovascular disease and prolong life. I guess you know very well about the telomeres. Um, uh, the ends of the DNA helix that will be shortened with every cell division. However, there is an enzyme telomerase that can uh, uh, elongate uh, these um, telomeres again. And he, there is also um, a human model, uh, hutchinson gill for Bulgaria syndrome in children undergoing rapid aging from age of 10, and they die normally age of 15, 16 of cardiovascular complications and aging. Uh, this can also be um, tested in uh, lab animals when manipulation of telomerase has the potential uh, to um, extend the lifespan. So this is perhaps another uh, possibility to counteract the vascular aging if uh, such a treatment will pro uh, be proven to be safe, because we also know that cancer cells are immortal and we don't want to risk cancers when we manipulate telomerase. Let's switch to longevity populations. Uh, there are a few populations uh, of great interest, what we can learn from longevity, but let's start with animals. There is the naked mole rat living under the surface of the earth, in East Africa, and they are accustomed to survive even uh, with very low oxygen supply. They have a slower metabolism and a longer lifespan, not harmed by oxidative stress to the same amount as other animals. In Greece, there is the island of Ikaria, and one study investigated pulse wave velocity in this population in blue, as compared to uh, controlled populations in red in other parts of Greece. And as you can see, uh, the pulse wave velocity was lower, especially in the elderly individuals, maybe as a reflection of a more healthy lifestyle, Mediterranean diet, the sunshine, and less stress on this island a long-lived population. Uh, let's go to another population in Japan because I collaborated uh, with some Japanese uh, researchers uh, to investigate the uh, differences between two districts of Japan. On the one hand, we have the Nagano prefecture in mid-Japan well known for healthy lifestyle, 
Scandinavian-like climate and less cardiovascular disease. Uh, people from this district were investigated by use of brachial ankle pulse by velocity and then compared with other people from the Wakayama district, uh, not so far away, but on the coast and with um, higher cardiovascular risk. What was found was that pulse wave ve uh, velocity uh, was measured by brachial ankle pulse wave velocity was lower in people from the Nagano prefecture as compared to the Wakayama prefecture, especially in people aged 70 years or older. Uh, this is a sign of the healthy lifestyle um, uh, uh, and better conditions for um, vascular aging in people uh, living in the Nagano district as shown here on the slide. Uh, the nature is more Scandinavian like what could be of benefit perhaps. So in summary, um, arterial stiffness um, is measured by pathway velocity is the core variable associated with early vascular aging, EVA. There are different classes of drugs that can be used for the treatment of EVA. You know very well the antihypertensive drugs. Um, maybe the ROS blockers are more beneficial, but I guess that blood pressure control in general is what matters the most. We also have the statins, the lipid loan drugs, and also now, now the anti-diabetes drugs, especially the STLT2 inhibitors, but um, also G the GLP-1 receptor agonists have been shown to reduce blood pressure and thereby they could be expected to reduce also pulse velocity. A strategy targeting pulse velocity is more beneficial for long-term uh, pulse velocity control than standard care. This was shown in the SPART study. Um, so um, in this study, a combination of different drugs were used uh, with a aim to control pulse velocity. So we need several drugs in combination. But new experimental drugs are now being uh, tested to treat EVA. And these are under development telomerase, um, active drugs, CERT-1 activators, uh, et cetera, several drugs. So we will see what that will bring, but of course safety comes first and all these drugs now tested in uh, lab animals also have been tested to be tested in humans before we can trust that they are safe and, and uh, able to uh, postpone or reduce vascularating. Thank you very much.